Welcome back to The Creepy Files. Today we're going to cover one of the biggest phenomena on YouTube, horror Let's Play videos. As a, I suppose, ex-Let's Player now, I think I have some interesting insight into the topic. Just a disclaimer of sorts, there's a lot of PewDiePie and Markiplier in this video, and I know PewDiePie is the funny N-word bridge man, but for a long time, whatever Mark and Felix did was what everyone else did in the horror Let's Play community so they're probably the most accurate metric when detailing the history of horror let's plays. Before we go to the beginning, let's take a look at where we are now. If we're being honest, let's plays are starting to go out of fashion. Don't get me wrong, let's plays are still thriving, but in the horror community, reaction content related to Reddit and try not to challenges are definitely taking over. Most let's plays now are set up as one-offs or three scary games formats. Interestingly enough, Horror Let's Plays have almost come back around to how they were many years ago. Games based on trends. Back in the days of Slender and Creepypastas, whatever the current trend was, was what most horror games were based on. Now, with Five Nights at Freddy's, Baldi, and Siren Head, we're pretty close to that again. Speaking of the past, let's go back to what I believe to be the point zero of Horror Let's Plays. PewDiePie's Amnesia Reaction Compilations. Nine years ago, horror Let's Plays were like two minutes, but as people began to realize that there was something more here, people began following PewDiePie's lead, creating a golden age of long horror series like Amnesia, Penumbra, Cry of Fear, and Fatal Frame. Before the indie horror game market exploded, these long-form games demanded 10-plus part series videos. That's around the time having characters in your Let's Plays became the Let's Play meta. But as Amnesia custom stories became more popular, the world of smaller resource creators making games blew up. Shorter indie games became the new trend. Games like The House, The Corridor, and even a few early examples of RPG Maker horror games changed the landscape to one-offs and shorter Let's Play series. One of the only exceptions to this rule I can think of is SCP Containment Breach, which still has some YouTubers doing a series about it to this day but many other SCP games sit into this one-off or short-form mold much closer. But the much more important aspects of this era, around 2012, is the advent of the Slender games. Slender was the biggest thing in indie horror since Amnesia and eventually would surpass even Amnesia. Rip-offs, expansions, mods, and the ever-present challenge of actually collecting all eight pages kept people going for a long time, passing through into the next year of 2013 and beyond with the official sequel, Slender the Arrival. Slender clones, while by themselves a very important era of indie horror, also started the trend of taking a horror idea and iterating on it constantly, which we found later in Creepypasta games, Five Nights at Freddy's, and Siren Head, as more recent examples. Now there is a lot I could say about Slender, but I think if you want to go more in depth I'd suggest checking out my Is Slender Still Scary video I made a while ago. I talk in much greater detail there. Now a lot of these errors have bleed through into each other, so by no means are they perfectly separate. But while looking through the upload schedules of PewDiePie and Markiplier, I noticed a really interesting trend. In between the next era we're going to talk about and the Slenderman SCP era, around late 2012 to early 2013, there was a really interesting break period where quite a few indie horror games tried some new things. Which, Hide, and Where Am I? While they all feel different, I feel like they belong together as interesting artistic decisions made in a time where copying was king. Smaller, more experimental experiences like these seem to have died out not long after though, leading to our next phase. I would like to mention that there were definitely other games during this time, including the creepypasta games I mentioned earlier. But for me, the dominating type of game during this era of early to late 2013 was the RPG Maker games. Expanding again into longer form story based horror games, this era was filled with The Witch's House, Ib, and Mad Father. There were other notable games during this time, of course, like Vanish and Gmod Horror Maps, but the RPG horror games have lasted much longer than any of those. These RPG Maker games, I think, revealed something about indie horror that, while it had been explored, hadn't been done in such a large way. These games can have a deeper story. There can be fantastic twists, engaging characters in indie horror, 
which at the time was filled with trends and shorter experimental one-off games. And this idea would continue into the next era. Outlast, Amnesia, A Machine for Pigs, Among the Sleep. Bigger scale, longer, and more story-driven games began to dominate the Let's Play landscape, along with the advent of VR horror. But this era is a little confusing. Like the era of experimental artsy games, while there were some big names in there, the effect they've had hasn't really moved on past their prime. I think we're all just waiting around for... Five Nights at Freddy's is six years old now, and still it is one of the biggest and most influential game concepts and trends that still exists in horror today. I've talked about it at length before, but I can't overstate how influential this game was. We saw a fan game explosion not seen since Slender that lasted much longer, and so many other forms of media hopping aboard. Even though the series is old as hell, it still feels like I'm talking about something modern because it has somehow lasted longer than any other trend I can think of, with the exception of Slender. Much like Slender, I'd like to draw your attention to my Five Nights at Freddy's video I made a bit ago, because I talk about just how influential it was. But let's just say we are far from the end of the FNAF era, even if it started six years ago. And here we are, back to the present. There are a few honorable mentions I'd like to make. For one, although somewhat overshadowed in this video by Five Nights at Freddy's, August of 2014 also had the release of P.T., which went on to inspire a countless number of similarly put together games, including the quite successful Visage. As well, FPS creator horror games were a huge part of my life during their heyday, but they did so little to impact the indie horror let's play landscape in general, I didn't think it was worth going far into. Trends in indie horror can come and go, and YouTube let's plays are both affected by and affect the way horror games are made. From classics like Slender and Amnesia, to more recent trends like FNAF and Baldi, I'm excited to see where indie horror takes us next. But until then, this has been The Creepy Files. Let me know what you thought of this episode in the comments. You can suggest what I should cover next on my Twitter or Instagram, and follow me on Twitch because I've got more stuff coming up over there soon. See you all next time. I like it, Kaji.